Today I'm giving you a complete walkthrough of Cancun's newest luxury resort, the Waldorf Astoria. We're going to do a walkthrough of the hotel. I'm going to give you my reviews of the various restaurants, tell you all about them, as well as give you a room tour and my overall review after staying here for the last five nights. And stick around until the end because I'm going to tell you how I stayed here for almost free, a stay that would have cost over $12,000 for the six nights. So coming in the front entrance here, you walk through these massive wooden doors and get this great smell of the wood. It smells amazing in here. And I saw pictures of this place before coming and it looked nice, but you really don't understand just how beautiful it is until you see inside of here for yourself. But it's a really tranquil lobby. Uh, there's never been very many people in here. Unlike I went to the all-inclusive Hilton right next door, which is actually connected through this hallway here. And my, oh my, it was so busy in there. There were like a hundred people in the lobby having drinks and all sorts of stuff. So right here is the fine dining steak and seafood restaurant called Malpeque. Uh, we've eaten here a few times and the food was incredible every time. So you walk in here and it smells like fresh seafood right away. But it's a really great ambiance. I loved this restaurant. And I actually probably thought it was the best value of any of the restaurants here. Almost everything I had at Malpeque, it was like, oh my gosh, this is one of the best foods I've ever tasted. And then over here to the right of the main entrance is the check-in desk straight across from there. And then to the left of that is going to be the concierge. And all of this is 24 hours a day. So you can go to the concierge at any time. To the left here is going to be your lobby bar. And then this is one exit out to the pool area. So we just put our hand there. Out here, those are the outdoor seating for Malpeque. But then there's this really nice area of palm trees and water. This isn't the pool you swim in at all. This is just for looks but it's been really nice. They have fire pits out here. Last night we came out and sat by the fire because it was getting a little bit chilly at night in January, but the weather is great. Uh, we're here mid-January, mid to late January, and the weather has been amazing, except it was a little bit windy for a few days. Coming down here to a really expansive pool area, there's tons of seating and it's never been too busy. Like, I think the busiest I've seen it is maybe 10% of the chairs in use. So they have regular chairs here, as well as day beds that you can rent. They're pretty pricey. They're $200 a day. Uh, but for example, yesterday it was windy and they're like, for safety reasons, we can't put the umbrellas up. And we asked, hey, well then, could we have a day bed? Uh, because we'd like some shade. And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. Normally they, rent out, but uh, since there aren't a lot of people here and there's plenty of them available, sure, why not? But when you come out here, the service is amazing. They're like, hey, can I set up your beds for you? And then they put three towels on there, one on the base, one on the back, and then a third as like a pillow behind your head. As for the pool, it was a really comfortable temperature. You have a very shallow area right here and then after that, it drops off to about four feet of depth. I mean, it's perfect weather outside today, just a little bit of a breeze, mostly sunny. And as you can see, there's hardly anyone out here uh, relative to how many chairs there are available. This is a place you want to come if you want like a really relaxing vacation. Now the Hilton All Inclusive next door, that's a place you go if you want a fun vacation, but this has been incredibly relaxing. Here's a station to wash off your feet after you're coming up from the beach. But I really love that they have created their own beach up here, elevated away from the water. So they have all this sand up here that never gets any seaweed or anything like that. And you have like the beach vibe without any of the gross stuff that comes with the Riviera Maya water a lot of times. So in winter, there's typically not much seaweed, but we've seen quite a bit of the sargasso here during our stay in January. Now they clean it up every day, but thankfully there's never any 
up here. We'll walk up here and check out the second pool here, as well as the pool bar restaurant area. So while we were out at the pool yesterday, we ordered, so it was a coconut with gin, and it also had like Waldorf Astoria Cancun stamped on the side of it, so that was pretty cool. But going up a few stairs here, you're at the second pool, and there's like four of these hot tubs in the pool area as well. And again, not very many of the pool chairs are being used. As we walk over here, the pool bar and restaurant area is on your left. But uh, when you're sitting out at the pool, the service has been amazing. There's always someone coming by to offer you anything to drink or eat. And then in addition to that, people will come by, would you like a popsicle with fresh fruit or a mist to spray on your face to cool off and freshen up? As we walk right over here, we're going to go into another entrance that's by the place where we've been having breakfast every day. If you're a Diamond member, you're going to get breakfast for free at this restaurant called Chaya, which is like the international themed restaurant. And to the left here is the outdoor seating for Chaya. We've had breakfast here every single day and dinner here last night, and it has been really awesome for the most part. But yeah, uh, really great. And, awesome if you're a diamond member especially with a free breakfast and then right here there's a few shops here you can buy some hats and some beachwear drinks and snacks over here various uh, mexican souvenirs and then here is like jewelry handbags perfumes colognes things like that by the way stick around until the end because i'm going to tell you what i liked about this place what i didn't like about it and how we stayed at this hotel that would have cost us about $12,000 for our six nights here for basically free. So I'll tell you all about that after we finish the tour of the hotel and of the room. But walking through these hallways here, you really feel like you're in luxury. So this is all marble. They use marble throughout the hotel. The rooms are filled with marble and the carpet is really soft to walk on. As we go over here, we're gonna come up to the Mexican themed restaurant called Jiao. And of the three restaurants on property, not counting the little restaurant at the pool bar because I think they just serve part of the menu from Jiao. Uh, this is my least favorite. We ate here once and I, I probably want to eat here again. But yeah, the other two restaurants, Chaya and Mapeque, I highly recommend. But Jiao was a bit of a letdown. And then Coming around here, we're going to be going downstairs into the spa and gym area. So here's the signs, fitness center and spa. So I took a tour through the spa earlier off camera, but they're pretty private in there and they don't want filming. But really nice, I'll show you the pool of the spa from another level and it it looks really nice from there as well. But anyway, coming into the fitness center here, everything is brand new. Uh, we've been in the fitness center almost every single day. And we've gotten some good workouts in, lots of options of bikes and stair steppers and ellipticals and treadmills. You have complimentary water and towels there. Over here, there's a versatile TRX machine, some exercise balls, medicine balls, uh, what are those called? Uh, uh, can't think of the word, but <laughs> these guys. <laughs> Yoga mats for stretching. Over here you have free weights that go up to 75 pounds. And then this versatile machine here that you can do a lot of different exercises on. One thing I dislike about this gym is there's no weight equipment to work your legs. I mean, you can do a little bit here with the ankle straps, but I mean, I wish they would replace, take a couple of these treadmills out or something and replace it with a couple of machines to work your legs. And then this would have basically everything I need for a small gym setup. And then right across the way, there's a 
just a small building right outside the windows there. And every day at, I think it's 10 and 11 a.m., there are various classes like uh, Pilates, and I think they have a TRX class. Also, every day at the beach, they have morning yoga at 7 a.m. So uh, that's something we were never awake early enough to do, but that would be cool to go out there and watch the sunrise as you do yoga. So now I'll go show you the room. And right before I go up to the room, I'll show you one of the public bathrooms downstairs just so you can see how nice this is. So in here you have real towels to dry your hands, which is nice. And then in here, in each one of the bathroom stalls, you have your own sink with real towels. So I thought that was pretty cool. Tell you what, no matter where you are in this resort, you will feel like you're in this amazing, luxurious place. So we are on floor five. This hotel has a pretty expansive footprint, but despite that, it only has about 170 rooms and all of them face the water. So let's go inside of ours. We are in room 521, the oceanfront suite. You walk in the front door and immediately you're like, wow, this is nice. Everything in here is marble. A lot of the furniture is marble. The flooring is, the countertops are. Right here to the left is the first of two bathrooms in this place, and it's actually a full bathroom with a shower and all. Walking out of the bathroom, you have the mini bar area here. So you have an espresso machine, and there is complimentary tea and coffee here, and then complimentary waters, but then there's also a paid mini bar area, as well as cold drinks there, but those are not free. And there is no refrigerator in here, which I was a little bit disappointed about, but I did see them delivering a refrigerator up to one of the rooms. So in here is the main living room area. You have a sofa, a big TV, and a couple more places to sit over there. All the furniture in here is super high quality, and I can barely lift this small coffee table. And here's the first of three doors to get out on the balcony. Yeah, there's three ways to get out there. And all the lights and drapes in here are automatic, so you can turn on the dining area lights if you want it at night, ambient, terrace lights, the drapes are automatic. And here you can increase the temperature, put all off or all on, whatever you want. You have lots of options, and there's a lot of these automatic lights throughout the rooms. In here, separated by a wall, and then two different doors that close, and they have this nice soft closing feature, which is really nice, they never slam, is the bedroom area. King size bed, super comfortable, a couple more places to sit over here, so you kind of have like your own living room area in the bedroom. So, I mean, I'd probably be okay if the room was just this area and over and didn't even include this first living room area over here, but it is nice to have that extra space. And right here is the second way to get out to the balcony. But let's head on into the bathroom. I love this bathroom area. I love the whole layout of this place. Whoever designed this did an incredible job. I would be super happy living in a place like this myself. So we go into the bathroom area. Here is the second toilet. And then you have your vanity, like makeup mirror, getting ready in the morning area. And over here you have double sinks. It's really well lit. I like that the lights in the closet here are automatic. You just walk up to them or you open the doors and boom, the lights come on. Lots of closet space, which has been pretty nice. I love this shower area. This is incredible. Amazing water pressure and lots of hot water, of course, <laughs> but you can choose to have your shower from here or the rainfall shower head above, both are amazing. And then right here is the third exit to get out to the patio. But here, you can also go into your private soaking tub, which has been pretty nice. Uh, we only used this once during our stay, but it was a nice feature, I liked it. And then out here, 
you have two chairs, a table, and then a view to the whole pool area as well as the water. Just gorgeous. Now let's talk about what we liked, what we loved, and the things we didn't like. I'm gonna start with the things we didn't like and end it on the positive things. So this resort has some operational problems, no doubt about that. But as I'm telling you these problems, keep in mind this is a new resort. It's only been open for a couple of months and it's very obvious that they're trying really hard to make improvements in any way that they can. And I've stayed at some other new resorts and those were an operational nightmare compared to the Waldorf Astoria in Cancun. While staying here, the thing I had the biggest problem with was housekeeping. It was super inconsistent, and there was one day that I wasn't even able to get the room cleaned, despite asking two different times. And as for the inconsistency, like one day I'd come back and my charging cord would be neatly rolled up, and the next day it would be just left there hanging. Like one day, the stuff in the bathroom would be neatly organized, put on a towel, and then the next day it would just be left a total mess. So a lot of inconsistency like that. And then there, there were pieces of trash and uh, used glasses that weren't picked up. So it seems like the housekeeping isn't very well trained here. Like we would take the uh, paper off the soap and leave it here. And then uh, the housekeeping left the paper there for, well, actually they never took it. After like three days, I just took it out and threw it away myself. And when you're at these super high-end hotels like a Waldorf Astoria, there's typically twice per day housekeeping, once in the morning and then a turndown service at night. So if you've never had a turndown service, basically they'll come in here, they'll clean up the room a second time, replace all the towels a second time, and they'll take the bed sheets, pull them back like to get it ready for bed. Here at the Waldorf, they left a piece of chocolate on each nightstand as well as a bottle of water. And then they also take the tea out of here and put it on a tray with teacups and then they put it on this table over here along with this electric tea kettle. But normally when there's two, twice a day housekeeping, they in the morning they take that stuff away and put it all away. Well, these maids just left it out there and they left it out there the whole time. So for this room tour, I actually did that myself and just put it away up here so it would be out of the way for the tour. And then another problem I had uh, while staying here was many times I would be calling down whether it was to make a room reservation or to request housekeeping or to request that the car be brought up from valet. And I would call and I would press the concierge button because there isn't a housekeeping button or anything. There's Anyway, I would press this, it would ring and ring and ring, and a lot of times it was five minutes, 10 minutes, and then most of the time I ended up just giving up and hanging up the call because it never got answered. And my third problem I had with this resort was, it was windy a few of the days we were here, and when it's windy, there's a really loud whistling coming from right here in the window. So that detracted from the experience. Oh, and something else that I didn't like was that it seems like everything here is unnecessarily expensive. It's just expensive because they can. You're like not close to anything. The resort is kind of isolated. So I feel like they mark the prices up just because they can get away with it. For example, Anytime you want a cocktail here, no matter where it is, whether it's room service, at a restaurant, out at the pool, no matter where it is, it is about 400 pesos or $20 per cocktail. And it's not like they're using top shelf ingredients. They're using good ingredients, but not great. For example, if it's a tequila drink, it might have Don Julio Blanco. So for $20, I don't know. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't justify paying that much. So. I hardly ordered any drinks while here. Now, if they were 200 pesos, if they were half the price, yeah, I probably would have had a lot of drinks, but no, I couldn't justify it. We went out to a grocery store, we got some drinks, we got a bottle of whiskey for myself uh, and drank mostly that. And then also the food is super expensive. Thankfully, being a Hilton Diamond member, our breakfast was comped every day at Chaya, but our tickets ended up being after tax and tip like 
$90, almost 2,000 pesos for breakfast every day. Granted, because it was free, we were ordering more, so we would get like fruit and a main dish instead of just the main dish. But still, it is pricey. Of all the restaurants, I thought the best value was actually at Malpeque, the fine dining steak and seafood place. Still pricey, but I feel like just way better value for your money there than at the other restaurants. And you can get an all-inclusive pass to the Hilton next door if you're staying here at Waldorf, but that's pretty expensive. Like if you want a partial day pass that doesn't include dinner, it's $150 per person per day. And if you want one that includes dinner, it's $200 per person per day. So if you're a couple here, that's an extra $400 per day if you want to go next door and have that all-inclusive experience. So I don't think that's worth it because you could just pay that money and spend less just paying for all your meals here. But despite those problems, I still loved this stay and would gladly come back. So what are my favorite things about this place? Number one, it's all brand new and super luxurious. You feel like you're in total luxury the whole time you're here. And the service was also incredible. There's always people going out of their way to see if you need anything. And if you're out by the pool, there's people coming up to you right away to put out the towels and to serve you drinks, food, whatever, as well as anything else you might need while you're out there. So the service here, besides housekeeping and besides trying to call down using that phone, it has been excellent. And then my favorite of all is the food. The food here was incredible, especially at Mopeke and at Chaya. Chaya breakfast, not as good as Chaya dinner, but still for Chaya breakfast, there were some incredible things like the mezcal French toast. Whew. But I highly recommend over at Malpeque, the steak and seafood restaurant, is the whole fish of the day. We got the sea bass. It served for two. It was amazing. And uh, the roasted cauliflower was also really memorable there. Now, cauliflower might not sound that great, but even if you're not a vegetable lover, you will love that roasted cauliflower with everything they put on it, that tahini sauce, the pistachios, the pomegranate seeds. Whew so freaking good. If you're staying here, I do recommend that you rent a car so you aren't stuck at the resort. Renting a car helped us be able to get out of the resort for a lot of the meals so we didn't have to buy the super expensive food here. But when I booked my tickets with Aeromexico, they offered me a add-on for a Hertz rental car. So I did that because it was a reasonable price. But then, I got to Hertz and it was a nightmare. They're like, okay, in addition to the cost of your rental car, that's going to be an extra $100 a day for insurance. And I'm like, no, I'm not paying that. I don't have to. I have uh, rental insurance elsewhere. Anyway, the long story short, they threatened to send me to jail uh, when I started recording to expose their scam that they're running. And that's going to be a separate video that I'll link here if I've already posted it. But if not, subscribe and that'll be coming soon. Rent a car, but don't rent it from Hertz or one of the other major companies here because they're all a nightmare from what people have told me. So go find that on the channel and link that at the end of this video as well after it's posted. In that video, I'm gonna give you another recommendation for someone reputable you can use to get a rental car when you're coming here. Because it's not a long drive into Puerto Morelos where you have a lot of restaurant options that are far more affordable than those here at the resort. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes telling you how we stayed here for almost free and how you can do this too. Keep in mind, this is going to be a very quick overview of how I did it, but I could go way more in depth on this topic and give you many, many tips on how to book these dream vacations for free or almost free and quite quickly. So if you're interested in a more in-depth uh, version of this, let me know in the comments below and I'll consider making that video. But for now, here's a quick overview of how I did it. So if you're coming to stay here, my first tip for you is to get status with Hilton Hotels. Now, you can do this a couple of ways. Number one is you can stay at Hilton's for a whole bunch of nights a year. I forget what exactly it is to get to Diamond, but I think it's something like staying here 50 nights 
in a year, which is a lot. And anyone other than business travelers probably aren't going to be able to reach that. But you can get to diamond status by getting a cheaper credit card that's like an annual fee of $100 and spending a certain amount on that. Or what I actually recommend is to get the Hilton Aspire card, which gets you automatic diamond status. So because we got automatic diamond status here, we got upgraded from a regular room to the King Suite. So it went from like a $700 a night room to a $1,900 a night room. But in addition to the normal prices, they also add a 10% service fee onto that. So that's what pushes it over the $2,000 a night mark. So because of the diamond status, we got a $1,200 a night upgrade to this beautiful room and free breakfast every day. So the free breakfast every day saved us about another $500. And the annual fee on this card is $450, but just from the upgrades and the free breakfast, that more than pays for the cost of the card. But in addition to that, in addition to those benefits, you also get priority pass, which gets you lounge access in the airport. And if you've never flown with lounge access, your travel days are going to be so much better. In fact, you may even look forward to travel days when you have access to the lounges. But in addition to that, you also get a $250 airline credit every year and a $250 credit to use at a Hilton resort every year like this one. So that's $500 in credits. Plus, in addition to that, you get a free night reward every single year you have this card. So basically we booked five nights here with points and then we used one free night reward to get that sixth night for free as well. And to book this with points, it's 95,000 Hilton points per night. However, if you book five nights with points, you get the fifth night free. So basically you only have to pay four nights with points. So in other words, you need 380,000 Hilton points to book this for five nights. And when signing up for that Hilton Aspire card, at least right now, the sign up bonus is 150,000 Hilton points after a certain amount of spend, which isn't too hard to reach. So between the points you're gonna get from that spend plus the sign up bonus, you're already halfway to the number of points you need to stay here for five nights. And so that's what I did. I, I got that card, got automatic diamond status, got all those credits, priority pass and all that. And then I signed up for another Hilton credit card and put some spend on it and got enough points to book this pretty quickly. It did not take that long to get this amazing stay totally comped. So that's how you can do it too. I'll link to those cards down below. Watch this video next. It's of how Hertz tried to send me to jail at the Cancun airport.